Hey guys, I hope you're having a great day so far. My name is Caitlin Mills and I am an admissions representative at OTC. The purpose of this video is to give you more information about financial aid and hopefully help answer some questions you might have about FAFSA, scholarships, A+, student loans, etc. So we'll go ahead and get started. First up, I wanted to talk about the types of financial aid. Grants, scholarships, loans, and work study. All of these financial aid options are based on FAFSA, so you must fill out the FAFSA in order to be eligible for any of these types of financial aid. Grants are free money that do not have to be repaid. The most common type of grant is a Pell Grant, which is a need-based grant. The information prov provided on your FAFSA will determine if you qualify for a Pell Grant or not. How much grant money you get depends on financial need, how much time you attend college, whether that be a full academic year or less, and whether you attend full-time or part-time. Later in this presentation, I'm going to talk about scholarships and how to apply for them as well as student loans. Work-study is a need-based program where students are allowed to work part-time on campus to make some money to use towards their education expenses. If you qualify for work-study, the Financial Aid Office will contact you and let you know that you qualify and how much you are eligible to work. Work-study is available for part-time or full-time students, and there are various jobs around campus, so you get to choose which job interests you the most, then apply and interview for it just like you would a regular job. Work-study pays at the current state minimum wage amount, and work-study jobs pay to you directly as the student. As I mentioned earlier, FAFSA is the basis of financial aid. Now we're going to talk about the first step to completing the FAFSA. The first step is creating an FSA ID, which is a username and password that you must use to log in to the FAFSA website. Make sure you keep your FSA ID in a safe place or you can access it in the future because you'll have to complete a FAFSA every year that you're in college. If you are a dependent student, meaning your parents still claim you on their taxes or that you are not 24, married, or have a child, then one of your parents will also need to create an FSA ID because they will be required to input their tax information on your FAFSA. Also, just a side note, if your parent has any older children who have gone to college before, it is possible that they already have an FSA ID. In that case, they would just need to enter the email address associated with their FSA ID and reset the password. If they have any trouble doing that, then they can call the customer support phone number listed on the FAFSA website. Make sure, make sure you and your parent use different email addresses when creating your FSA IDs. If you're considered a dependent student based on the factors I mentioned, but have a special circumstance where you don't have contact with your parents or similar situation, then I would recommend reaching out to the financial aid office so they can advise you on what your next steps are. Now I'm going to show you what it looks like to create an FSA ID. So at the top, you'll see the website, which is FSAID. Dot ed dot gov. I just wanted to show you guys what it looks like because there are a lot of um, FAFSA websites out there that maybe aren't the real website. So this is what it looks like. And then you'll see the tab that says create an FSA ID. And this is just like creating a login for any, any other type of account you might have. It's going to ask for a username and a password and then you'll click continue and go all the way through until it says it has been created successfully. After you've created your FSA ID, the next step is to fill out the FAFSA. FAFSA stands for Free Application for Federal Student Aid. And as I mentioned previously, the FAFSA is your application for financial aid. It qualifies you to receive grants, scholarships, and student loans. Here's the website to fill out the FAFSA, fafsa.gov. Again, make sure that you're on the right website, not fafsa.com or fafsa.org. Make sure it is fafsa.gov so you get on the correct one. 
The FAFSA is filled out annually. If you're planning to go to college in the fall of 2020, spring of 2021, or summer 2021, you can fill out the FAFSA now, and you'll complete the 2020-2021 FAFSA. And just so you know, uh, you will use two years prior tax information on the FAFSA. So for the 2020-2021 FAFSA, you will use 2018 tax information, just so you know. And this shows you what it looks like. So once you have logged in, you will select the 2020-2021 FAFSA, and that's if you're planning to take uh, classes in the fall. If you're taking summer classes, you'll need to complete the 2019-2020 FAFSA first, and then this kind of shows you what it's gonna look like. Um, you'll have the FAFSA renewal option available once you've done that FAFSA, and then you can just click Renew, and it will input some of your personal information for you into the 2020-2021 application. That way you don't have to redo all of that stuff. Step three for financial aid is apply for scholarships. So once you've done the FAFSA, um, you will, at that point, just wait to hear back from our financial aid office. They will put together an award package for you that shows if you're eligible for grants or loans or work study or anything like that. And then the next thing you could be doing while you wait is applying for scholarships. So at OTC, we have a wide variety of scholarships, and they're divided into two categories. We have institutional and foundation scholarships. And here's the link to where you can go to apply for these. And there are certain deadlines, so make sure that you do pay attention to the application deadlines. So for fall, um, the scholarship applications are currently open and the deadline is June 1st. So make sure if you're wanting scholarships for the fall that you apply prior to June 1st. And then for the spring, applications will open on September 1st through November 1st. And for summer, they'll open March 1st and close May 1st. And what's really nice is you can go on our website, you can look through these two different types of scholarships, and it's going to be an application for institutional and an application for foundation. And then you could write one essay and use the same essay to put with both applications. So that's really nice. You don't have to worry about writing two different essays or anything. And then at that point, once you've applied, we have a committee that will sit down, look over your application, look over your essay, and then they will get back with you on which ones you're eligible for. So you don't have to look through all 300 scholarships and apply for them individually. You just need to put in an application for institutional, application for foundation, and then we do the rest of the work for you. There are some other scholarships outside of OTC. Um, on the web, there are thousands of different scholarships. Here are a couple websites that are reputable scholarship websites that you can check out if you're interested in that. Here is how you would search for scholarships on our OTC website. So up here, I have put otc.edu slash financial aid slash scholarships. So this is the same link that was provided on the last slide. And then if you scroll down just a little bit, it says how to apply for OTC institutional scholarships, OTC foundation scholarships. So you can start with one and then move on to the next one and get, get an application in for both. There's also some tips on here, um, success tips for scholarship applicants, and additional outside scholarship opportunities are listed on here as well. Step four of financial aid, this is optional. This is student loans. So I mentioned that our financial aid office will put together an award package for you. If you are eligible, they will automatically put on your award package a student loan. And you can choose to accept or decline that student loan once you hear back about scholarships or if you're going to be getting grants or work study or anything like that. Um, but if you need an additional student loan on top of what your award package is showing, this is kind of what you would do to request that loan. 
you would go to studentloans.gov, log in with your FSA ID, and then you would complete entrance counseling and the master promissory note. And these are both things that once you do them, they're good for 10 years. So anytime uh, you plan to take out student loans throughout your college career, you should only need to do this once and then it will be good for you. And once we receive your entrance counseling and master promissory note, again, our financial aid office will review those documents and put together a loan amount that you're eligible for. And then you can go in and accept or decline the loan or even reduce it if you want a smaller loan than what's presented on your package. And if you have any questions about student loans, how much to take out or if you need them, those types of things, I would definitely reach out to our financial aid office and they can help you figure all of that out. Using A-plus funding at OTC. So if you're an A-plus student, you just have to be admitted to OTC, send us your official high school transcript once you graduate, make sure you have the appropriate FAFSA on file, Maintain full-time student status, which is 12 or more credit hours in the fall and spring semester and at least six credit hours in the summer. Then you just have to maintain a 2.5 cumulative GPA. A-plus pays for a two-year degree. A-plus covers tuition and common fees. It does not cover course-specific fees or books and supplies. For example, A-plus will not cover the lab fee for a science class. Check out the A-plus Advantage Scholarship. This is on our website. Here's the link to it. This is $500 to help you cover the cost of books and fees that A-plus doesn't cover. I would highly recommend applying for this. It is a very simple scholarship to apply for, and we give out multiple of these scholarships every semester. So if you don't get it the first time you apply, apply the next semester, and chances are at some point you'll probably get this. If you have any questions, please feel free to email us at explore at otc.edu. We can set up a time to meet with you over the phone if needed, if you have any more, if you have more in-depth questions and what we can answer by email. Currently, we're under some restrictions due to COVID-19, so we're not meeting with students in person on our campus. So email us first, and then if, if we need to do something more than that, we can set that up individually. And if you have any questions about the OTC admissions process or OTC in general, definitely check out our video that is posted right before this one. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.